Well, you mentioned Elon Musk. I'm curious, Chris, if you were a younger man, would you accept the mission to Mars? And do you think we need to be on Mars? Well, right now, we don't have any spaceships that can credibly take us to Mars. Um, but, you know, it wasn't very long that we didn't have spaceships that could credibly take us a lot of places, you know. So, um, and the pace of invention is accelerating. So, uh, predicting when things will actually happen in the future is, 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 you know, it's really hard to make predictions, especially about the future, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, my life has been about setting what seemed like impossible goals and then looking at uh, whether there's any chance that that might happen as part of my life. Is there any chance? And if there is, then, okay, how can I start changing who I am to be part of the team of people that is going to be able to do those things that, that are so exciting to me? And that's the choice I made when I was nine to, to try and turn myself into an astronaut at a time when Canada didn't have astronauts, didn't have rockets, didn't have a space agency, you know, there, that was impossible. So when you talk about Mars right now, we can barely send robots there. We, we get away with it now most of the time, but, you know, for a long time, half of them didn't make it. Uh, but Mars is further away than most people think. And it's really hard to get to, but it's a wonderful, inspirational idea because Mars has vast quantities of water and uh, Mars has an atmosphere. You know, the moon has water in very hard ice frozen in the craters, but uh, no atmosphere at all. And so Mars is the most Earth-like planet after us. So it's the next logical uh, place for human habitation. And it seems fanciful, right? Seems crazy. But I live in Toronto and it was a cold night here last night. Um, Without technology, everybody in Toronto would have died last night. We, we just sort of take our level of technology for granted. Uh, you know, a long time ago, we harnessed energy and fire and we figured out how to build shelter, reliable shelter, how to make clothing so that we can protect ourselves. And then how do you not just grow food and, and collect food, but store food so that it can feed you through the long months so that we just think, well, of course we live in Toronto. Millions of people live here. So what? But without having invented over hundreds of thousands of years, all of the technologies, this is not a place that human beings could live. Mars is no different. It's just, have we solved the technological problems yet that allow that to be a place that we could live? And then who would want to go live in that place? You know, who would want to live on a spaceship, on a space station? A lot of people. And we've been living in an otherwise completely deadly environment for the last 22 years, peacefully and very productively living in outer space on the space station. We're just about to start settling the moon, not just, you know, uh, just the early explorers, but to the point where we can start mining the moon and having an earth moon economic system because our technology uh, is good enough and the cost is low enough and the safety is high enough that suddenly that's starting to make sense. We'll eventually figure that out for Mars as well. It's going to take longer than everybody thinks, but we need to invent a few things along the way. But it, it's sort of inevitable. And to get all of our eggs out of one basket, to make it work in with everything else that we need to do to take care of ourselves and take care of our planet as well as we can, you know, it, it's not an either or. It all has to be part of the same collective effort. But it is, it's sort of right now in the Star Trek category. It inspires people. It makes people dream. It makes people think. It makes people impatient with the way things are right now because they want to get to that Star Trek future. And I think it's necessary to have those influences in life. Otherwise, all we're doing is just repeating the same things that our grandparents did over and over and over again. And and without that sense of wonder and exploration and learning and growing and better understanding the universe that I think is so necessary for a full life. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. 
I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.